right, y'all? Do y'all know where y'all at? It ain't even Baltimore, Maryland no more. It's Kazaland. K N Y A Z L A N D. Kazaland. It's Princeland. Kazan stands for Prince. That's the first thing. The land is that is Princeland. The men need to take over for mankind. I never heard of womankind. I heard of mankind. We are going to shine like you wouldn't believe. You are a walking billboard for God. Because guess what? Not everybody understands what we're about. Not everybody can relate, but what they can do is see, I don't understand. But that right there, I want to learn more. How do they get these men? Because it's nothing but the Spirit of the Lord. In the great direction of Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Yawasap, Bishop Kanai, and the deacons of IUIC. That's why we're here. But at the end of the day, the buck stops with you. You, you, you gotta do everything to attention to detail. Everything. Shalom brothers and shalom sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is, that's right, it is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. And you know how I love to read your letters of exhortation and your donations of support, but before I do that, I often love to cover a little bit of our hidden history. Now the history clip is going to give you a lot in there. So I need you to take good heed, pay close, close attention, and share, share, share with your Christian friends, neighbors, and family members. And let's check this out, all right? Atlas Geographus, or a complete system of geography, ancient and modern for Africa. Uh, this is volume four, printed in 1714. Let's go over to page 39. Now I have this book in another format, but it's, the print is so small. Uh, remember, these are reprints. Leo says there are other kingdoms on the southern frontier of this country, talking about Africa, which are inhabited by a rich, industrious, and just sort of people. Judaism was the religion of the ancient Africans for a long time and succeeded by Christianity. But Mohammedanism, Islam, prevailed in the 208th year of the Hegira, when all the Jews, Christians, and professors of the African religion that could be found were put to death. Yet in process of time, their intestine quarrels made them neglect Muhammad's law and revolt from the Caliph of Baghdad, for which they were severely punished by the Mohammedan Caliphs who caused all their books to be burnt on suspicion that the knowledge of the arts and sciences prompted them to contemn Muhammad's law. Y'all see that? Let's go down to the next highlighted section. Those of Upper Ethiopia worshiped the Lord of Heaven before the Queen of Sheba went to Solomon to be instructed in the law of Moses and the prophets when they embraced Judaism as did also some of the inhabitants of Lower Ethiopia, who continued in it till they were taught Christianity by the queen 
of Candace's eunuch who was baptized by Philip. Okay, let's go over to the side. Some of the Jews who inhabit both sides of the Niger derive themselves from Abraham. Others fled hither from Asia when Vespasian destroyed Jerusalem or from Judea when it was when when it was wa wasted when it was wasted by the Romans, Persians, Saracens, and Christians. Some were banished from Italy in 1342, from Spain in 1462, from the Low Countries, that's the Netherlands, in 1350, from France in 1403, and from England in 1422. These all defer, inhabit, and are divided into several wealthy and numerous tribes, but have no dominion, are despised of all nations, uh, and so abominated by the Turks that they are not permitted to be Mohammedans unless first baptized, and then made use of only to receive their customs and gather in their taxes. Wow. There are so, this is page 292, there are so many Jews here who serve as mercenary soldiers and are called by the other Jews in Africa, Karsun, i.e. scripturemen, for they reject traditions. You see that? They are so fond of their own black complexion and so much abhor a white one. It says, they are so far, they are so fond of their own black complexion and so much abhor a white one that in contempt they paint the devil white. He observes that they have tried all religions and agree in none. This said, they were first idolaters, then Jews, then Christians. Africa being an accurate description of the regions of Egypt, Barbary, Libya, and Bildegurid, the land of Negroes, Guinea, Ethiopia, and the Abyssinians. Abyssinia, that's Ethiopia. All right. This was published in 1670, 1670. Africa being an accurate description of the regions of Egypt, Barbary, Libya, and Bill Delgarid, the land of Negroes, Guinea, Ethiopia, and the Abyssinians, that's Ethiopia. Published in 1670. 1670. Let's go in. All right. I'm on page 34. That's the original page, but in this book, it's on 31. All right. I'm going to start here. Many Jews also are scattered over this region. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed. It's talking about Africa. Let's see the title here, Africa. Many Jews also are scattered over this region. What region? Africa. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed, inhabiting both, si inhabiting both sides the river Niger, or Niger. Others are... Uh, Others are Asian strangers who fled thither either from the desolation of Jerusalem by Vespasian at 70 AD or from Judea, wasted and depopulated by the Romans, Persians, Saracens, that's Muslims, and Christians, or else such as came out of Europe, whence they were banished. So in referring to those Jews, those black Jews that were banished, those Jews that were keeping the commandments that were banished. Not all the, all the blacks, but the ones keeping the commandments. 
out of some, they were banished where from where? Out of some parts of Italy in the year 1342, out of Spain in the year 1462, out of the Low Countries, that's the Netherlands, in 1350, out of France in 1403, out of England in 1422. These all defer in habit and are divided into several tribes having no dominion, though both wealthy and numerous, but despised of all nations, and so abominated by the Turks that they are not admitted to be Mohammedans unless first baptized, and then, no other, and then no otherwise made use of than to receive their customs and gather in their taxes. All right, here you see Spain there. All right, I want you to look at the borders of Africa. There's Arabia. Let me just come in closer. All right, there's Somaliland. This is the Horn of Africa. Ethiopia, called Abyssinia at this time. I want you to notice where they got the Jews located at. There's the Falashas there. Look over here, Yemen Jews. That's in Arabia. But I want to focus on Africa. All right. Tababan Jews. A pre-exilic Yahwism. That's for those that followed Yahweh. All right. Let's move over. Let's move over. I'm going to go down to the bottom. Look. Loando Jews, this is on the coast of Africa, all right? Mavumbu Jews, look, this is what I was just showing you in the other books. San Tome Jews, remember the Israelites was, the Jews were cast out of Spain and sent to San Tome or St. Thomas. That's that island right there. All right, look, Levite cities, where amongst the houses, you know, a lot of you Nigerians, you hate the houses. It's Cameroons. Levite cities over here. This is Nigeria. Nigeria. N-I-G-E-R-I-A. Nigeria. You got Levite cities there. Houses. Levite cities. Levite cities. Beni Ephraim. Sons of Ephraim. Beni means, or Benai means sons of Ephraim. Okay, the Homi, the Homi Jews, Jewish traces all amongst the Ashanti, Judeo paganism. So these Israelites here were following pagan customs around Cape Verde and Senegambia. The Lamb Lamb, once a Jewish colony, Timbuktu. Let's go around here. Medieval Jewish Kingdom, Jewish Kingdom of Ganada. Let me go down, let me find some of these words, let me look. Mm. Let me go up along the coast, I'm gonna follow the coastline. Beni Musa, son of Mo sons of Moses. Now, it's hard for me to see. Y'all know I wear glasses, but if y'all at home, y'all could spot some of this stuff before I do. Berber Jews. Berber Jews. Black Jews. And I want y'all to see this because this is what the so-called scholars put together. The Jews were cast out of Spain. Remember that history I've been showing y'all for a while. My eyesight ain't that good, but I'm just showing y'all this map. So if y'all see something, y'all can freeze screen it. Freeze the screen! <laughs> Israel immigrates here. Look at that. To Arabia. That's Arabia right there.
Jewish traces. What's that say? Wasambara? Yemen Jews and Falashas, Berber, Moorish, and Negro Jews. So the white man knows the blacks are the Israelites. They know that. They keep this stuff hidden from us. This video on the role of Christianity in the slave trade, with a special focus on the Catholic Church. Sometimes it's important to dive into the uncomfortable and difficult parts of history, even if it makes us squirm a little. And boy, does this topic have some uncomfortable parts. We all know that slavery is one of the darkest chapters in human history. But what many people don't realize is the significant role that religion played in justifying and perpetuating the practice. And when it comes to Christianity and the slave trade, the Catholic Church was right in the thick of it. From Pope Nicholas V's 1452 papal bull that authorized the Portuguese to enslave Saracens, pagans, and other enemies of Christ, to the Jesuit priests who owned slaves themselves, there's a lot to unpack here. But fear not, my dear viewers. We'll take a look at the history, theology, and the human impact of Christianity's involvement in the slave trade. The slave trade involved the transportation and sale of African people as slaves to the Americas and other parts of the world from the 16th to the 19th century. It was a brutal and dehumanizing practice that involved capturing and enslaving people against their will, separating them from their families and loved ones, and forcing them to work under inhumane conditions. The origins of the slave trade can be traced back to the European exploration and colonization of Africa in the 15th century. Europeans wanted to establish colonies in the Americas, and they needed a cheap labor source to work on their plantations and mines. They turned to Africa, where they found a ready supply of potential slaves. Africans were captured by slave traders, who would raid villages and take people by force. They were then transported across the Atlantic Ocean in brutal conditions packed tightly into the holds of slave ships with little food or water. Many died on the journey, and those who survived were often sick and weak by the time they reached their destination. Once they arrived in the Americas, slaves were sold at auctions to the highest bidder. They were forced to work on plantations, mines, and in households, and were treated as property rather than human beings. They had no rights and were subject to brutal punishment if they disobeyed their masters. The slave trade had a devastating impact on Africa, as it disrupted traditional societies and economies. Many African communities were weakened by the loss of their people, and some were destroyed entirely. The Catholic Church was heavily involved in the slave trade, as it was seen as a way to spread Christianity to Africa and the Americas. Christianity played a significant role in the transatlantic slave trade, with many Christian leaders and institutions supporting and profiting from the practice. This fact is often overlooked, as many people associate Christianity with benevolence and goodwill. However, the reality is that many Christian leaders and institutions were complicit in the slave trade, and it is important to understand their role in this dark chapter of history. One of the most notable Christian institutions involved in the slave trade was the Catholic Church, and many Catholic leaders continued to own slaves and profit from the trade. The church also played a role in justifying the slave trade, with some church leaders arguing that it was a necessary evil to bring Christianity to Africa. The role of the Catholic Church in the transatlantic slave trade is a complex and controversial topic. The Catholic Church was one of the most powerful institutions in the world during the era of the slave trade, and its involvement in this system of human trafficking has been the subject of much debate and scrutiny. While some argue that the Catholic Church was complicit in the slave trade, one of the most significant roles the Catholic Church played in the slave trade was its involvement in the colonization of the Americas. The Church played a significant role in the Spanish and Portuguese colonization of the Americas, which led to the forced labor of millions of indigenous peoples and Africans. The Church played a key role in the justification of these practices, using religious doctrine to argue that the enslavement of non-Christian peoples was justified. For example, in 1452, Pope Nicholas V issued the papal bull Dum Diversus, which gave the Portuguese monarchy the right to enslave non-Christians. Furthermore, the Catholic Church was involved in the sale and ownership of slaves. Many of the wealthiest and most powerful individuals in Europe and the Americas during the era of the slave trade were Catholic, 
and many of them owned slaves. The church itself also owned slaves, with some religious orders, such as the Jesuits, owning plantations and using slave labor. The church also profited from the slave trade, as it collected taxes on the sale of slaves in its territories and used the proceeds to fund its activities. However, it is important to note that the church's involvement in the slave trade and slavery had a lasting impact on the people affected by it. The legacy of slavery can still be seen today, with many people of African descent facing discrimination and inequality. Protestantism was also complicit in the slave trade. Protestantism was also complicit in the slave trade. Protestantism was also complicit in the slave trade, with many Protestant leaders owning slaves and investing in the trade. With many Protestant leaders owning slaves and investing in the trade. Some Protestant leaders even used the Bible to justify slavery, pointing to passages that seemed to condone the practice. However, the fact remains that Christianity was often used to justify and support the slave trade. One of the most interesting aspects of the relationship between Christianity and the slave trade is the role that religion played in the lives of enslaved people. Many enslaved Africans were forced to convert to Christianity. Many enslaved Africans were forced to convert to Christianity. Many enslaved Africans were forced to convert to Christianity, often by their captors or by missionaries who believed that Christianity could civilize them. However, many enslaved Africans also found solace and hope in Christianity, even as they were oppressed by their Christian captors. It is worth noting that the relationship between Christianity and the slave trade was complex, and there were many different perspectives on the practice within the Christian community. However, it is clear that Christianity played a significant role in the transatlantic slave trade, and it is important to acknowledge and understand this history. Of course, all of this raises some interesting questions. If Christianity was used to justify and support the slave trade, does that mean that Christianity is inherently oppressive? Does it mean that all Christians are complicit in the slave trade? The truth is, the legacy of the slave trade is still being felt today, centuries after the last slave ship set sail. Slavery was abolished in the 19th century, but its impact of it is still being felt across the globe. Let's take a look at some of the lasting effects of the slave trade. First and foremost, the slave trade created a massive wealth gap between Western nations and African nations. The slave trade was a huge source of revenue for countries like Britain, France, and Spain, and the wealth generated from it was used to fund the Industrial Revolution. Meanwhile, African nations were stripped of their resources and their people, leaving them impoverished and underdeveloped. To this day, many African nations are still struggling to catch up to the rest of the world in terms of economic development. The legacy of the slave trade is also evident in the racial inequalities that still exist in many parts of the world. The idea of white supremacy, which was used to justify the slave trade, is still present in many societies today. It's hard to deny that race plays a role in things like hiring decisions, police brutality, and the criminal justice system. These issues are deeply ingrained in our societies, and it will take a lot of work to undo the damage that has been done. One of the most insidious legacies of the slave trade is the notion of whiteness itself. The idea of a white race is a relatively recent invention, and it was created in large part to justify the subjugation of non-white peoples. The idea that there are inherent differences between races, and that some are superior to others, has been used to justify everything from slavery, to colonialism, to genocide. You saw it for yourself, now that was some good information. Good information. Now it's such information that our dear brother, G. Craig Lewis, disregards in his ministry. Now his ministry is called X Ministries. Why it's called that? I don't know. I rightfully don't care. And one thing I do ask of all you Christians out there, rather than do lessons or teachings about the Israelites, why don't you have the decency, the nerve, the courage, sit down with us. We're not violent. We know how to act. We can be cute. We want a dialogue. Okay, this is what the church blitz has always been about, trying to fix the black and brown community to bring us all on one accord. Now, I was going to leave Brother uh, G. Craig Lewis of X Ministries alone, but he put out a little Sunday school lesson called The Color of Christianity. 
Um, and I call it a false message by G. Craig Lewis of X Ministries. Let's go to Matthew 19 and 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now, I want eternal life. Uh, our brother G. Craig Lewis, he wants eternal life. His congregation wants eternal life. But what we got to do, what we got to do. Let's read on. Verse 17, and he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. What you got to do? Keep the commandments. That's what's missing from Christianity. That's what's missing from X ministries. That's what's missing from the teachings, the doctrine of G. Craig Lewis. Now, I would have never really messed with him. I was going to leave him alone. We wasn't even going to blitz him or nothing. Okay, however, he decided to put Israel United in Christ in his thumbnail on his Sunday school lesson. All right. So since you decided to put us in your Sunday school lesson, we're going to deal with your Sunday school lesson. Now, one of the commandments, the ninth commandment to be exact, is thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. Meaning don't lie on us. Please, Christians, you black Christians out there, have this, the decency, have the cojones to sit down with us, mano a mano, have the testicular fortitude to sit down with us so we can come on common ground with what the scriptures are saying and that how we can fix the black and brown community because we messed up as a people. We are messed up, okay? So let's take a look. <laughs> Adamandbeliever.com Amen I sent this message to Sister Evelyn the proof and I told her You know I'm gonna get in trouble again It's kind of just the theme of this year So amen Look at somebody and say the color Of Christianity Now I know somebody might get offended Hopefully you will so that you'll know that this is not a stop off for Hebrew Israelite doctrine. Hey. That's damage control. Dam can you say damage control? For him to say this is not a stop off for Hebrew Israelism or whatever he said, that lets me know that members in his congregation have been asking him, hey, Pastor, what about the truth or the facts that these brothers have been bringing out? that we are the children of Israel. And I'm sure it was more than one person, and I'm sure it's more than two, three, four, five, for him to spend his time to put a lesson, a Sunday school lesson out on the Israelites. But let's continue. Hey Amen. if you believe any of this in part or in whole, you are in the absolute positive wrong church. So if you believe anything that the Israelites teach you are in an absolute wrong church, okay? You're in the wrong church. See, this is why I ran the hell out of Christianity. Because all that white supremacy, I can't take it. I couldn't take it. I couldn't raise my kids in it. It's just crazy. I tell you something that happened. I this story time. My daughter was a how old was she? I want to say five. And a Christian, who my wife knew, brought her a Barbie doll. And not black Barbie either, white Barbie. I said, if you don't get that out of my house, I said, you will not give her a self-esteem issue with your white supremacy Christian doctrine tactics. Oh, she was mad. That girl never came back to our house. That's how you got to do it, brothers. That's how you got to do it. But let's go on. I digress, sorry. And if you talking to folks in there about it, they gonna tell me, and we gonna have a conversation. I'm gonna walk up. I wanna have a conversation with you. Hey, you said if they, if somebody hears you, the brothers and sisters in there, talking about anything the Israelites teach, you gonna have a conversation with them, and you gonna walk up to them? Well, walk up to me. I'll walk up to you. Let's sit down, mano a mano, and discuss the word of God. But let's go on. 
Let me back up a few seconds. Let me just back up a few seconds. Folks in there about it, they're going to tell me, and we're going to have a conversation. I'm going to walk up to you with this microphone and ask you some questions. Ask me. Or if you, you may be a part of the Aryan nation. You may wear a sheet on certain nights. What? And you may be in here, and we don't believe that either. Amen. Hey we don't believe people. black supremacy. We don't believe white supremacy. We don't believe any human supremacy. Because there's only one supremacy. There's only one supreme being. And that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Only one. Let's pause right there. He said he don't believe in black supremacy or white supremacy. There's only one supremacy. That's Jesus Christ. And I can agree with that. Christ is the all in all. And let, let me get the scripture. Let me go to Ephesians 1. Let's preface it with that. So, brother uh, G. Craig Lewis, I'm going to agree with you that Christ is the absolute. Let me get it. Where's Ephesians? Which he wrought in Christ. That he is there as the Father, which he wrought in Christ when he, the Father, raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, under Christ's feet, and gave him to be the head. Christ is the head over all things to the church. The church is the 12 tribes of Israel. It is not X ministries. It is not the Catholic church. It is not the Baptist church. It is not the Seventh Day Adventist church. It is not the Lutheran church. It is not the Mormon church. It is not the apologetic church. Okay, how do I know who the church is? Let's go to Acts 7 real quick. I know I'm digressing, but I just got to prove a point. Acts chapter 7 and verse 37. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall you hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness, with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. So who was the church in the wilderness? The 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel. I hope you all understand it at X Ministries. I hope you Christians get it. I hope you understand it. So now, back to supremacy. So you got the father. You got to, wait, let me get that. I got to get the scripture. Because I know, uh, I don't, I'm not sure how if G. Craig Lewis believes that Christ is the only begotten of the Father. And I don't want to put words into his mouth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to first Corinthians. That's right, I said Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So that God there is the Father. God the Father. Okay. So there is a supreme being. There's a hierarchy. Where do we fit in? Because he said, I don't believe in black supremacy. <laughs> Listen. I'm going to take you to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Watch this. Follow along with me so you know I'm not lying. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. This is what the Lord Christ said this through Moses. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Whoa! Now that sounds like some supremacy to me. The word above does not mean equal to. It does not mean below. The word above means exactly what it means above everybody. So now you may say to yourself, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what about the New Testament? Well, let's go to 1 Peter. 
Bear with me. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye, talking about the Israelites, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now he's quoting, you got Deuteronomy 14 and 2, you got Revelation 1, 6, Okay, there are many chapters that say the same thing about the 12 tribes of Israel. That's some supremacy to me. That's how I read that. That's what it is. It's no equal to. Okay, so now let's go on with our brother, G. Craig Lewis. He's not a black man. He's not a white man. Wait. He said he's not a black man. He's not a white man. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Listen. Stop the lies. You ministers, you Christians, please stop lying. I'm going to read Revelation 1. Now, you can get mad if you want. I don't give a hoot. Revelation 1, verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let me, for time's sake, let's jump to verse 14. His head and his hairs, meaning the hair in his head and the hair in his face, were white like wool, as white as snow. Wool is a texture. Let me say it again. Wool is a texture. Afro hair. Afro hair. Like I got, like many of you got. Black people hair. It reads on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Why? When you read Genesis 49, verse 12, Moses said the coming Messiah's eyes shall be red with wine. In Matthew 11, verse 19, the Israelites said about Christ, he was a wine bibber. Okay, let's read on. He drank wine in moderation, mind you. Verse 15, and his feet like unto fine brass. Brass is brown. Brass is brown. Let's show you some. Brass is brown. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. You could take brass and burn it. It turns black. Heck, you could, turn, you could get white rice and burn it in a furnace. It gets black. So the Bible describes this Jesus Christ. Let's go back to what our brother said again. Let me go back a few seconds. Bear with me. Bear with me. There's only one supreme being, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Only one. He's not a black man. He's not a white man. He's the son of man. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If he's the son of man, that means the son of Joseph. That also means, let's, 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 let's take it all the way back. That means he's a son of Adam. If he's a son of Adam, if he's a son of Joseph, he had a color. He had a race. What was it? What was he? Why is there in Christian, there's this cloud of confusion when it comes to Christ? Huh? Ask yourself that question. Why? Now, you might say, he's not the son of Joseph. Okay. You're about to get cut. John chapter 1, verse 45. Philip findeth Nathaniel. Yeah, that's my name. That's what my mama named me. And saith unto him. We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. The son of who? The son of Joseph. Get your facts straight, brothers and sisters. Let's go back to our dear brother. And he's in a dimension where he don't even have to have skin color because he don't have to have skin. Well, in the heavens, skin, flesh, and blood cannot inherit up there. Okay, we understand that. But he's being very crafty with his words. He's saying skin. So if we were to say that he has, the Lord has skin, he'll come back. See, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. Brother, we are two steps ahead of you. We, are, we understand that. But what he's really trying to say to the audience is that the Lord has no 
color in heaven. That's what he's trying to say. Let me go back a few seconds so I don't misinterpret or misspeak on his behalf. <laughs> and he's in a dimension where he don't even have to have skin color because he don't have to have skin. Somebody told me that because I said in one message that it was, you know, God's image was translucent. Jesus' image was translucent. How do you know it's translucent? The Bible don't say it. Translucent. God's image is translucent. Jesus' image was translucent. Do y'all know what translucent means? Invisible. Invisible. You mean Christ was invisible? You could just see through him? How did they find him? How did Judas walk up to him and kiss him on the cheek? How did they nail him to the cross if he was translucent? You know what? That's funny. There's a movie called, um, or a series called The Boys. And there's a superhero called Translucent. Take a look at this clip. Look, you let me go. You'll be the hero that saved Translucent. It's not too late. You can still go home. Back to your life. Atta boy. you saw for yourself. You mean to tell me Jesus Christ, the son of God, the son of man was translucent walking around the earth. See, our brother tries to be slick and he has a pull to himself. The more simple minded of our people. You have to excuse me for speaking like that, but is there no one in the congregation with rational sense? Let's go back a few seconds and let's listen to this again. God's image was translucent. Jesus' image was translucent. How do you know it's translucent? The Bible don't say it's translucent. Well, it's translucent as far as our eyesight is because we see skin, but we can't see into that dimension. There's no need for skin in that dimension. He said you can't see into that dimension. Au contraire, mon frère. The Apostle John saw into that dimension. I'm going to go to Revelation 4. Read along with me. Read along with me. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 1. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Where? Heaven. That's another dimension. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, meaning loud, which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Verse 2, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. Let's take a look at a jasper stone and sardine stone. Sometimes they say sardius stone. Take a look. Do y'all see this? Do you see the brown color? It's showing you that God is a black man. That's right. Let's go back. Verse 3 again. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. That's color. In sight like unto an emerald. That's more color. So you got a, a rainbow over the throne. There's colors in the rainbow. If I'm not mistaken, about seven colors. Put a rainbow on the screen so we can see the rainbow. Then it said, like unto an emerald. Emerald is green. So what does C G Craig Lewis mean by the falsicity? Is that a word? I don't know if it ain't. I just made it up. What does it mean by the lie that there's no color in that dimension or whatever he said? I'm proving him false. I am proving him false. 
<sighs> Let me go back a little bit again. Bear with me. Into that dimension. There's no need for skin in that dimension. We just proved that wrong. Well, colors there. Amen. We need skin here to house our bodies. Okay, see, that's how it's trying we to be know slick. Skin decay. He's trying to be slick with his words. Brother, you can't fool me. See, if he talks to me, I'd ask him straight. I'm not talking about skin, brother. Everybody knows flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. But is there color in the kingdom? Is there color in heaven? And if there is color, what color is God? Hmm? We just read Revelation chapter 4, verse 2. It said, like a sardine in jasper stone. So don't try to pull that on us. Let's go on. And if there's no death there, then there's no skin there. Amen. Amen. So I'm just letting you know, you might want to leave now. <laughs> because we're going to talk about this. This church is growing rapidly and we cutting it out and making room and all of that. So I want to make sure you know you in the right place. Amen. Amen. We don't believe in any, any supremacy, any, anything. We don't worship blackness. And Wait. We don't believe in any supremacy. I got to get back to that again. Is there going to be supremacy in the coming kingdom? Let me go to Isaiah 14. You tell me what this means. This is a prophecy that has not occurred yet. Uh, let me get it. Isaiah 14, verse 1. And it reads... For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, meaning the 12 tribes of Israel will be back in their land. And the strangers, meaning the other nations, shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel, meaning all 12 tribes, shall possess them, possess the strangers, in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And that has not happened yet. Don't tell me it happened during the time of Persia. All 12 tribes did not go back to the land during the time of Cyrus. Stop the lies. Let's read on. For th and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Do you see this? This has not occurred yet. Okay. Because the next verse goes into Babylon, the great, which is recorded in the book of Revelation, chapter 17 and 18. Okay. That's what this is talking about. Let's go on. Revelation 2. Verse, I'm told, is there going to be supremacy in the kingdom? Revelation 2, 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works, meaning the commandments, unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. What nations? The strangers that we read about in Isaiah 14, 1 and 2 and 3. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you comprehend? Let me read it again. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them. Rule who? The strangers that oppressed us. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Do y'all see that? So dear brother G. Craig Lewis, sit down with us. Talk with us. We say the same to T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar. We say the same thing. Sit down with us. Don't assume you know what we teach if you're not willing or if you are afraid to sit down and sit down and go over the scriptures with us. Let's go on. 
Amen. Amen. We don't believe in any, any supremacy, any, anything. We don't worship blackness and your melanin ain't popping in here. We don't worship. Nobody worships skin if that's what you're talking about. Okay. I remember, um, was one brother called it racial idolatry. Okay. Which is so funny. Um, he said, your melanin is not popping. He has, let me show you something about some of these ministers. Let me show you. I'm going to go to the book of Maccabees, chapter 11. First Maccabees, chapter 11, and verse 21. Watch this. And it reads, Then certain ungodly persons who hated their own people went unto the king and told him that Jonathan besieged the tower. You always had Israelites who despise their own people. This is why you hear such things as your melanin ain't popping in here. This is why you hear, like I remember Geno Jennings said, your black ungodly skin. They despise their people. They despise themselves. Remember what Bernie Mac said? It was a movie. He said, I hate the back of Whoopi Goldberg's neck because it's black. I hate your black gums. I hate your black. It was a whole thing about hating black. It was funny. I thought it was funny. But you have a lot of ministers with that same rhetoric. They just say it. They just, they just mask it a little more better. Let's go on, though. Hey, Amen. Your melanin is not. Look at somebody say, your melanin is not popping in here. I mean, we don't worship skin cells and skin pigmentation. Nobody worships skin cells. Hey, man, how you living? Let me just say it for the book, for the record. G. Craig Lewis, don't ever lie on us and say that we worship skin cells. We worship skin. We do not worship skin. The Bible says in John 4, let me get it, in case you think that we're ignorant. John chapter 4, bear with me. John chapter 4, mm. verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, we showed you the spirit in Revelation 4. There is color in the heavenly dimension. Color as the jasper stone, the sardine stone, the rainbow. There's color all in heaven, in the spirit realm. Okay, and worshiping, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Okay, watch this. Psalms, 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 Psalms. 119. Bear with me. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142 reads, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. When Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he was talking about he's the law. He is the lawgiver. Let's go on. The question, is your lifestyle popping? So we don't do any of that. Look at somebody say, the color of Christianity. All right. So the foundation of our belief is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We believe that. All Israelites believe that, if I'm not mistaken. Well, well I can only really speak on Israel united in Christ. We're the ones you put in your little thumbnail. We believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he is our black Messiah. He is our king. He is our Lord. He is God. Like it says in John chapter 1, verse 1. So let's go back so I don't misspeak for him. All right. So the foundation of our belief is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We Amen? believe that. Y'all believe that to be true? Yes, we do. Yeah, that's what makes you a believer. You're not a believer because you believe the Old Testament law. Stop. Got a problem with that. 
He said, you're not a believer because you believe the Old Testament law. Well, what did Christ teach when he was walking the earth? The Old Testament law. Do I need to remind you back in Matthew 19 again? Let me go back because he obviously don't know about it. Matthew 19. Verse 16, and and behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, this is what Christ says, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. What is Christ teaching? Old Testament law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Old Testament law. Thou shalt not steal. Old Testament law. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Old Testament law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Old Testament law. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Old Testament law. Do you see the foolishness of these Christian pastors? Wow. But let's go on. That don't make you a believer. You believe that that law, the penalty of that law, was paid by Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. That's what makes you a believer. Look at somebody and say, that's what I believe. Now, whoever didn't say that, do it again. And tell me who didn't say it. So, he said the death, burial, and resurrection paid the price for... You're a sinner. He's alluding to say you don't have to keep the commandments or something like that. Let, since these pastors like to speak in allegories, you never really know what they really mean. I don't think they really know what they mean. Where, do, where am I going? I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Watch what Christ said. Matthew 5, 17. And it reads... Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Christ said, don't think that I'm come to destroy the law. Or the prophets. Christ said, I'm not come to destroy the laws or anything the prophets prophesied about. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What did Christ fulfill? I guarantee if you ask this pastor, our brother, G. Craig Lewis, he'll say he fulfilled everything. That's not true. I'm going to show you that's a lie. I'm going to show you what he fulfilled. Acts 3, 18. This is what he fulfilled. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. So what did Christ fulfill? His suffering, his sacrifice for the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's go on. Uh, Look at your neighbor and say, that's what I believe. Y'all know I'm just looking for a fight. I'm, I'm so happy. Well, come I fight agree. with us. I'm looking for a member of the thunder or I'm something. I'm talking about spiritual. I ain't talking about food. But the foundation of our belief is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Don't come to church if you don't believe that. Go fishing. We go fishing for men, by the way. Amen. Go play Uno. Go do something else. Don't come here if you don't believe the foundation of what we believe. That is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We believe that. Oh, I didn't read the scripture. But Christ was not translucent. Neither was he a Caucasian. Let's get that straight. Neither was he, uh, what they call him, Arab. He was not an Arab. The hell is this? John says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. Who said that? Jesus. Jesus. And the life, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, what? Yet shall he live. We believe that. Yet shall he live. Isn't that plain and simple? That is. It's going to be a plain and simple. It don't, you know, it just bewilders me sometimes why these, you know, theologians that know Greek, Hebrew, and all this have to have these long, intense debates with the black Hebrew Israelites. It is really not that deep. Well, let me explain why they want those those debates. These theologians, they want to push our people back 
to being docile, back under white supremacy. And they're trying to be very clever with it. By now, the new thing in the earth is color doesn't matter. Well, for some reason, when they painted the lie that he was a Caucasian man, it mattered for over 400 years of chattel slavery. It mattered for years, centuries of Jim Crow, black codes, and segregation. But for some reason, after the civil rights movement, now that we've been somewhat, as they say, integrated, acclimated into white society, they say, oh, color doesn't matter. Nobody sees the plot and the twist of Satan. Nobody sees the plot and twist of the devil. We're reading that Christ has white wool hair, skin like burned brass, as if it burned in a furnace, and we say he's black, and they go, no, 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 no. Nobody sees nothing wrong. You don't see the plot. You don't see the strategy of Satan. If you don't see it, I can't help you. He don't see it. Our brother here don't see it. Well, let's go on. Let's hope for him. Let's pray for the brother. Let's pray for his congregation. Amen. Amen. I don't have to debate my faith because my faith is what I believe. You can pull all the documentation that you want, but your documentation doesn't change what I believe. So he's referring to me. I pull a lot of documentation during Shout Out Tuesdays like I did today on this lesson. I'll prove my point with secondary third sources, the Bible being the primary source. Understand that? Understand that. I got to prove it to you because some of you don't believe the Bible. So I'll show you books, old books from the 1800s, 1700s, early 1900s to show you what scholars wrote about our people as the 12 tribes of Israel. He, he, he refused to accept it. I believe Jesus was born. I believe Jesus lived. And I believe Jesus died in my place. Amen. Amen. Jesus gave his life for us to bring us back into good standing with God by paying the what? Penalty. Of Wait. Did y'all hear what he just said? Jesus died for us to bring us back into good, good what do you say, good graces? What do you say? I want to make sure I get his wording right. Jesus gave his life for us to bring us back into good standing with God. To bring us back into good standing with God. To bring us back into good standing with God. That's, to be, that's being reconciled, okay? Let me go to Amos 3 first. Amos chapter 3 and verse 1 and 2. Now, run, run, well, listen good. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel against the whole family, that's all 12 tribes, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only, let's read that again, you only. What does that mean? Change those two words around from you only to only you. You get it now? You understand? You got the thought? Verse two again, you only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. So that means the Lord don't know the Philistines. He don't know the Jebusites, the Canaanites. He don't know the Hittites. He don't know the Edomites. He don't know the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Amorites. He don't know the Hagarenes or the Ishmaelites. God don't know them. So what is he talking about? Jesus gave his life to bring us, the Israelites, back into good standing. Can I go to the New Testament and prove that? I'm going to go to the book of Acts. Hold on to your wigs. I'm going to the book of Acts, chapter 5. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Acts 5 and 30, 30 and 31. Acts 5, verse 30 and 31. 
the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. That's not hard. You don't have to be a mathematician to understand that. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to be a physicist. You don't have to be an astronom astronomer. <laughs> Let's go on. By paying the what? Penalty of sin for us. When you don't believe this, who's paying for your sins? Christ paid for us. Are you going to go give them to a priest? Or are you going to try to do things to buy it? Mm -hmm. Romans 6 and 23, for the wages, payment, y'all know what wages are. How many of you got a job? Oh, Amen. You, you when want, it's time to get your wages, you know exactly what that word means, right? Your wages, that's your payment. Money, money, money. money. Amen. Wages is money. We don't get paid in corn and rice and oxen. Oh, we get time. paid in money. He wants to get paid so in money, money is wages. Mm. Wages is payment. Mm. Amen. So Jesus gave his life to bring us back into good standing with God by paying the penalty of our sin, which the wages of sin or pay payment for sin is death. The only way to pay death is dying. Which makes it pos impossible for us to pay it and live. How you gonna pay death and live if you gotta pay death? Pay with death. If you have to pay with death, you can't live. Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye therefore and teach how many nations? All Jewish nations? All Gentile nations? All nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. What did Christ mean when he said go into all nations? We go over this all the time. What happened to the 12 tribes of Israel prophetically? Deuteronomy 4, verse 27. I'll start there. I'm going to go from the old to the new. Deuteronomy 4, 27. And it reads, And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. So what would happen to the Israelites? They would be scattered among the nations. Deuteronomy 28, 64. Watch this. And it reads, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. Let's go to the New Testament. Wow. This is so elementary. Let's go to the book of James, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Verse 1, actually. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings! That's not hard. The Israelites were prophesied to go into slavery and be scattered worldwide in all nations. That's why Christ said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Why? because the Israelites would be scattered in all nations. That's very easy to understand. Let's go on. Of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Summary! Summary! Oh. Once we accept the fact that God never judges us by skin color, but by... Ah, oh, Lord, we know God does not judge by skin color. We know that, okay? There, amongst our people, there are light, there's all different kinds of shades. Northern Kingdom, a lot of them, some of them look virtually Caucasian because of interracial mixing. So we understand it. It's the seed in them, the spirit within them, that spirit of faith, the seed of Israel being within them. By the heart then we can understand the perfect plan of God to bring us all together as Christians. You won't hate Christianity when you understand that racism was given to you to divide you. 
Racism was given to you to divide you. Let's see who orchestrated this racism which divided us. Come along. Deuteronomy 32. Don't get mad now. Verse 8. Watch what God says through Moses. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So who separated, who divided the nations, who separated the sons of Adam? Let me ask again. Who divided the nations? Who separated the sons of Adam? The Most High. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam. So who orchestrated this division, this separation? God! Let's go back a little bit so I don't, you know, twist his words or anything. Bring us all together as Christians. You won't hate Christianity when you understand that racism was given to you to divide you. So now that we know God divided and caused the separation of all nations, this is why we hate Christianity. Because Christianity is doing exactly what ancient Nimrod did, or attempted to do, bring everybody back together under Satan, under a satanic rule. Hmm? It wasn't given by God. The Bible states on numerous occasions, God is not a respect of persons. Let's pause right there. God is not a respecter of persons. Okay. That's Acts chapter 10. Let me get it first. I'm going to explain it. Acts chapter 10 and 26, 34, 36, of oh, 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Who was scattered in every nation? Hmm? The Israelites. Did you forget that? We just went over that. So what is he talking about? The Israelites. That amongst all the Israelites scattered in every nation, God is not a respect of persons. Who was he talking about first and foremost here? Cornelius. Let me show you a precept regarding Israel and the Egyptians. Exodus 2. Exodus 2 and verse 25. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you had the Egyptians, you had the Israelites. God looked upon Egypt. He said he had respect unto the children of Israel. So now you go to Acts 10. He's still talking about the children of Israel, that amongst them, there's no respect of person. You do wrong, you're going to get wrong. You do right, you're going to get right. Let's go on. It's not hard, brothers and sisters. Calling Christianity the white man's religion or saying that black... Christianity is the white man's religion. Christianity is the white man's religion. The Jews were called Christians first in Antioch. But there was never a doctrine called Christianity. You cannot, firm, you cannot find that terminology in the biblical text. It ain't there. Let's go back a few seconds. God is not a respecter of persons. Calling Christianity the white man's religion or saying that black slaves are the chosen people is ridiculous. When you so, calling black slaves as the chosen people is ridiculous. You can't make this stuff up. This is really some self-hate. It's either ignorance or self-hatred. Okay? Now, he made mention earlier, I, I got to go back to it before I deal with the black slaves. He said all your documentation means nothing to his belief. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, it reads, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. 
So our job, brothers and sisters, is to prove. We say we're the Israelites. We prove it through the biblical text as well as secondary sources and third sources. This is what we do. We prove all things. Um, our brother G. Craig Lewis, he goes into hip hop and proves what he says. But when it comes to who we are as a race, as a people, it doesn't matter. What does God look like? It doesn't matter. He's invisible. He's translucent. He doesn't prove all things. Y'all don't see the discrepancy with that? Now, let me go back so I don't forget the thought. Let me go back a few seconds. The Bible states on numerous occasions, God is not a respecter of persons. Mm. Calling Christianity the white man's religion or saying that black slaves are the chosen people is ridiculous. When is it ridiculous? Is it truly ridiculous? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, 15. I'm going to just read a few verses. And you tell me if this fits black people, our people, or those Caucasians in Israel today. Deuteronomy 28, 15. Remember, this is on the continent of Africa. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 32. I'm only going to read a few. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. What is that summing up? Slavery. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he, your enemies, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Did we have yokes of iron on our neck? Did our ancestors have yokes of iron on their neck? Take a look. Answer the question. Did it happen to us or did it happen to the Caucasian man in Israel who was put there in 1948? Hmm? Hmm? Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. When the Europeans took us into captivity, did they have us serve the wooden cross of Jesus, of white Jesus? Yep. That's why many of you walk around with a cross around your neck. You think it's holy. Uh, when we were taken captive by the Arabs and they took us to Afghanistan, they took us to Saudi Arabia, they took us to Mauritania, they took us to India, Pakistan, Iran, Iraq. Did we worship the, the stone god Allah, the Kaaba stone? Yes. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. That means slavery. Egypt is Greek. It means slavery. House of bondage. Again, with ships. With what? With ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there, once you got off the ships, you shall be sold unto your enemies. For bondmen, slave men, and slave, and bond women, meaning slave women. And no man shall buy you, meaning no man shall redeem you. <sighs> so this fits us. If you got a third grade, edu or I'll say fifth grade education, you know this fits our people. It don't fit the Caucasians in Israel. But let's go back a few seconds so I don't twist my man's words. States on numerous occasions, God is not a respecter of persons. Calling Christianity the white man's religion or saying that black slaves are the chosen people is ridiculous. When you grow and mature. See, that's the part. You got to grow and mature in the faith to understand the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so people that believe that Christianity is a white man's religion or black slaves are the chosen people, they haven't grown and matured in the faith. Wow. They're still in the Old Testament. Oh, wait. I know you haven't grown wait. and matured because you ain't got to the New Testament yet. Wait. So he means slavery is not mentioned in the New Testament? That we, hey, hold on. Hold on. Luke 21. See, brother, you need to be quiet. Luke 21, 24, this is what Jesus said. Prophecy. And they, meaning the Israelites, shall fall by the edge of the sword, Rome would slaughter us, and shall be led away captive. 
The word captive means slavery and shall be led away captive into all nations. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Why? Because the Israelites would be taken into all nations. Hmm. Let me read it again. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So who's in Jerusalem? The Gentiles, the real Gentiles. Now I know we've grown up as Gentiles. We were told we were Gentiles. We may even have lived as Gentiles, but we're the Israelites and we're waking up now. So Christ in the New Testament prophesied we would go into slavery. So what was our brother saying again? Let's go back to what he said. He said something real simple, silly, unlearned, uneducated. People that believe that Christianity is a white man's religion or black slaves are the chosen people, they haven't grown and matured in the faith. They still in the Old Testament. I know you haven't grown and matured because you ain't got to the New Testament yet. Amen. The New Testament is the completion of the Old Testament. They go together. Uh, brothers, sisters, what else can I say? I, he did over an hour. I just got some key parts I wanted to touch on. I'm showing you how our brother, although we, he's our brother, we love him. He's unlearned. Uh, he refuses to sit down with us. Uh, Deacon Isaac is out there where he's at in Texas. So the Lord's will, he will, the spirit will open up his mind and sit down with us and we can have a a, a discussion on who we are as a race, as a people in the Holy Scriptures. We can also, once we come on a, one agreement with that, we can come to the biblical conclusions or solutions, I'll use that word, on how to fix the ratchetness, the sin that runs rapid, rapid, rampant in the black and brown community. Because we got the solutions. We know what to do. So brothers, sisters, let's sit back and let's get ready for the reading of the shout out letters. All right. All right, let's get to the reading of the shout out letters. This first letter reads Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel, and leadership of Israel United in Christ. I would like to thank the Most High God for you and all the brothers that put your lives on the line for the children of Israel. Thank you for always obeying the Most High in Christ. We all love you and all the brothers. I'm adding, bop, bop, bop. may God continue to bless you and your households as well. From Sister Patty D. Thank you, Sister Patty. All right. This next one says, Greetings. Most High in Christ bless you all with his power and grace and love. Here is my offering to help the ministry with my appreciation. All praises to the Most High. Sincerely, T I'm going to say it, how you pronounce it. Tichera. Tichera M. Sister Tichera. Okay. Tichera. All right, this next one says, Bishop Nathaniel, blessings to our nation. All praise to the congregations worldwide. It is amazing. God bless. I am very thankful for this teaching and being awakened from a deep sleep. All praises, Sister Louise, D.C. Camp. All praise. And I see you guys sent me here private. I'll put that to the side. This next one reads, Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. Thank you and all leadership for the powerful lessons that are brought to us. You are constantly building us up in preparation of that great and wonderful day of the Lord. We continue to lift you all in prayer for health, courage, and strength to constantly endure in faith. Most High in Christ bless Officer Isaac and Sister Rebecca. Nola Camp, all praises. This next one is a card. Shalom to all my brethren, Bishop Nathaniel, keep bringing that fire, great leadership, Deacon Asaph, fire, Obadiah 1, Eden of Destruction, Feast of Dedication, that is fire. One of the best videos I have seen, wow, I have, have it on repeat, 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 all praises from Sister Carol, I, all praises. This next one says, Shalom Bishop, Most High in Christ, bless, hope you're having a blessed day, IUIC Kansas, from Miss Jennifer S., thank you Jennifer. I'm having an okay day, all praise the Lord. This next one's a card. says, just want to thank you. <clears throat> Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. I'm so excited about our growth. It's really getting big as I pray that our people wake up and come to God. Bless you and your family. The check 
blah, blah, blah. It's for the pantry to feed my people. Uh, God says how important it is to help one another. I really want to say how happy I am to be part of IUIC. I don't have a school in my area. The closest is two-hour drive. I can't drive that for being 71 years old with muscle spasms. So thanks for listening. All praises. Love you all and ask the Lord to shower you with his blessings. Thank you all, bishops, deacons, and everyone who is helping IUIC. I'm so happy that I have a nationality. Sister Celinda A. 2024. All oh, praise. Thank you, Sister Celinda. This next one says, Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ. Bless sincerely. And Shalom, John, Jean, and Hezekiah. And ask the Lord to shower you with his blessings. All oh, praises. This so next one is a card. It says, Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ. Bless you and yours. I greet you as always in a spirit of exhortation. This is to consistently remind you that the work you do does not go unnoticed that we appreciate the time you put in immensely. Keep it up, Bishop. I was cracking up at the face you made in the video when you were in Rome. We're in the devil's house. <laughs> Laugh out loud. You were both serious and funny at the same time. That brother stuck on white Jesus was bugged the hell out. Lord, have mercy on him to wake up. Oh, shout out to Bishop Kenai and all who participated in the listening party. That thing was fire. Uh, okay, got to run. And until next time, kind sir, please accept these arms from my hand to yours to do what it seems best. Love you in the brotherhood. Zerubbabel, all praise a card for me. Congratulations. All right. <clears throat> this next one's a card. It says, Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ, bless. More than I can say, thank you for your sacrifice for the nation of Israel. I thank God for you and all the brothers that put yourselves out there for our sake. Most High in Christ, bless you all. We love you and respect you. Thank you for accepting the call from the Most High. I'm honored to learn from you, prophets. Praise you, the Lord. Love, Sister C. Thank you, Sister C. All right. Now, this next one says, don't read out loud. All right. Let me put that to the side right there. This next one says, dear family of IUIC, thank you for all you do for our nation. May God bless you all and keep you safe. Please pray for me. Just a little note with his huge gratitude. All praises. This next one is a card that says, thank you. Shalom, most high in Christ, bless. General Bishop Nathaniel, keep pushing this truth. I give thanks to the most high for you all bringing out this truth for God's people, which is needed. This is the help with the Booster Club. Many thanks, Sister Leslie. All praises. Next one says, Shalom, IUIC family. Thanks to all of you. My life has changed for the best. Thanks to all of you being the best examples ever. And education from the scriptures that is priceless. Thank you, bishops. My heart leaps for joy when I hear of you in so many parts of the world. I pray for you all to stay safe. I'm having a hard time purchasing a calendar. I go to IUIC, the menorah pops up. Thank you again. Sister Carolyn M. Well, Sister Carolyn, I think you have to go to the, I think it's a safari, um, safari website, not website. What is it called? It's not Google. Oh, put in IUIC 2024 calendar. Do that in Google. It should pop up then. All right, all praises. So next one is a card. Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ. Bless you. Happy Purim. A copy for you and a copy for New York Headquarters Kids Corner. And now I see this wonderful book you gave. You did, it says, For Such a Time as This, The Story of Parim, written by Ayla Sila Israel, illustrated by Chaya Yali Israel. It's a beautiful book. Lord's well, I'm going to have the brothers put it, just put a picture to cover and have Deacon um, Yashua put it on Original royalty also, because it's great. It is great. All praises to the Lord. Fantastic. This next one is a card that says, I'm so grateful. And opening it up, it says, Shalom. My head bows to you. I saw you in a vision 
I was woke, I was on my knees, you were giant standing over me. I was a little afraid of you, I thought it was Christ, but it was you, sir. Next vision I had, your face was close up to mine, and I was holding both my hands on your beard, and I said to you, remember me in the kingdom. So please remember, remember me in the kingdom. I will be sending alms every month. Most High in Christ bless you and your beautiful family. Thank you for your thoughtfulness, your kindness, your generous heart. I thank thee, Most High in Christ, for using you to wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. All praises, S Sister Chandra T. Wow, all praises. All right, let's get to the shout out donations. We're going to give a shout out to Charles D., Charles T. D., Sister Carol H., uh, Charles M. and Miriam I., Charles M., Miriam I. again. Shout out of thanks to Dawn N., I see that, Sister JJ, um, Sharon, Corliss, and Howard, thank you. Patty M.D., Patty M.D. again. Patty M.D., one more again. Shout out of thanks to Brother Carlton K., Warren T., Eliphalet I., uh, C., Drennan N., shout out to Lil David, Ronnie S., Karen W., V. Cameron, uh, Tiachera M., I hope I said it right, Louise E. P., Louise E. P. again, Louise E. P., one more time, Louise E. P., one more time, Isaac and Rebecca, all praises, uh, Laura M., all praises, Laura M. again, uh, Jennifer S., all praises, Charlie W. Jr., all praises, Hmm. This one, the handwriting is very hard for me to read, but thank you. This next one has no signature, So, but thank you. This next one says from Herbert C. This next one says Angela, I think that's either an N or a D, not sure. Shout out to Sharon E.H. Shout out to Dolores O. Shout out to Frankie M. B. of Winter Haven. Shout out to David H. Shout out to Priscilla M. Shout out to Edmund and Kara P. Shout out to Elisheba I. Shout out to Gwen R. Shout out to Gwen R again and Gwen R one more time. All praises Gwen R one more time. Shout out to Helen PT of Austin, Texas. Shout out to Frederick Rosa. All praises of Georgia. Shout out to hmm, R. Davis. Shout out to hmm, Celinda A. Shout out to Zerubbabel I. All praises. Shout out to Zerubbabel I. Shout out to J.H. Friday. Shout out to Hmm. Darda D. Shout out to Mr. and Mrs. Walker. Shout out to Johnny D. Shout out to B. Glover. Shout out to Dulan R. Shout out to Leslie T. Shout out to C. McKnight. Shout out to Chandra T. Shout out to Darda D. One more time. Brothers, sisters, you know how I love to say, let's all of us stay healthy, let's stay faithful, let's stay focused, but most of all, let's all of us stay in the spirit. Most High in Christ bless you all. Love you. Shalom.